This is Lama Tantrapa. Thank you for joining us for this online class. What we're going to do today is look at one of the most simple and elegant principles that we're going to study. How to relax under pressure. And guess what? It's not only something that we talk about. Oh yeah, it's nice to relax under pressure so we don't get stressed out. We also learn how to physically relax under pressure first. Because if you do that, you literally embody this principle so that we can walk the talk. Instead of just talking the talk, we learn how to walk the talk. And to learn how to relax under pressure, you can just apply pressure to yourself. For example, find areas of tension in your body. For example, if I just scan my body for a moment, and you're welcome to scan it too. Where are some areas of tension? If there are any areas of tension, let's bring our attention. Attention is like negation of tension. We'll look into attention in our next class. But for example, if I check, it seems like the tension in my left shoulder is greater than tension in my right shoulder for some reason. Okay? So what I'm doing now is bringing attention to this area of tension and applying just a bit of pressure. There are certain principles as to how much pressure to apply and also which direction to apply this pressure. These are details that we're going to explore in our further classes. Right now, let's just figure out that we can first connect through touch with the area of the body that is underperforming, that's tense or more tense than it needs to be. This undue tension is not a sign of strength. It's actually a sign of weakness. What do I mean by that? Tense muscles can't perform very well. If you consider that the functioning of the muscle consists of ability to contract and relax, if the muscle is already contracted, it can't contract much more because it's already as tense as it could be or close to that. And it can't relax. If it could, it would have done it a long time ago. So in other words, we cannot function with the tense part of the body. This actually may lead to recognizing that, in general, tension is not a sign of strength. It's a sign of weakness. Now, if you really pay attention to how much we apply this understanding to everything in our lives, we'll see that tension is almost synonymous to energy blockage. Because whenever the energy is flowing in a certain part of the body that is tense, it basically has a hard time flowing through the tense tissue. So it will create certain stagnation on one side, of that energy blockage and energy deficiency on the other side. We learn how to release this tension by literally learning to apply pressure and let go of the tension. I literally create some pressure on my shoulder muscle right here, deltoid, and tense it up a little bit more and then relax. Why do they tense up a little bit more first? Because there is no signal of relaxation that the central nervous system can send to the muscles. There's only more signals of contraction or fewer signals of contraction. So what do we do? We contract the muscle a little bit more, but do it consciously now. And then when we're ready to release the tension, we simply stop sending the signals of contraction. Now, of course, you may think, well, I could have just relaxed from the get-go, and you might probably not even know that you had this tension. In other words, it was an unconscious tension. You couldn't stop doing that which you were doing unconsciously. Now, when you apply pressure and you tense that a little bit more, you can feel how there is more tension, you're doing it consciously, and now you can consciously stop doing it. And when you consciously tense up and then consciously release tension, it will often, the level of tension will often drop below the initial level that you had before you did this exercise. If you do it more than once, it will actually drop each and every time. So I do it again. I contract this muscle. And now release this tension. Notice I also had a little bit of side. You may change that your breathing pattern change. You may notice your breathing pattern changes when you're ready to release tension. Or you may start yawning 
which is another great meditative kind of relaxation breathing technique. So, when you contract, often you will inhale. Just like when you yawn, you start with inhalation and most of the muscles of the body contract when you yawn, don't you? And so then, you're ready to release tension. Exhale and all the muscles of the body start letting go, including the muscle in question. So it's not just the relaxation of this particular muscle, the entire body becomes more relaxed. How would you benefit from having more relaxed whole body? Well, let's see. For example, I can be much more stable on my feet and not being pushed over easily if I'm relaxed. Again, a paradox. Many people think if I push back with tension or force, I will be able to withstand pressure. We'll test it. I'm going to ask one of my students and friends, Craig Satan, to do me a favor and assist me by simply pushing me into my stomach. Okay, would you do me a favor and just push me with a hand into my stomach? So I was a little bit tense, and they pushed me over relatively easily. Still, the more tension, the easier it is to push over. Now I relax. Notice how it didn't work. Do it again. I just relax, and I don't get pushed over. Notice how the stomach is actually softer. If you push me right into the stomach and just, yeah, you can even clench your fist. So you can really feel. Imagine a water balloon. If you fill the balloon with water and put it on the kitchen counter or in the sink, and try to push it. You push it and it just slushes around. The same thing happens here. You push with your fist and I just do what water does. Most of the human body is made of water. So we learn how to be more like water. We learn how to redistribute the pressure that is applied in one particular direction so that it flows in all the directions. 360 degrees, actually even more because it's in three-dimensional volume of my body. Instead of just being affected by this vector of force, the force is distributed everywhere, just like in that water balloon. And as a result, I don't get pushed over easily. I don't even feel like I'm have to, I have to struggle against the push. I just simply relax and do it. Would you do me a favor and push me one more time? Notice how I just exhale, relax, and in Chinese it's often referred to as song. So it's that relaxation that is not completely limp. There is certain tone, but it's not high level of attention. It's a much more relaxed state than most people experience when they're under pressure. So what we do is we learn how to translate this into other spheres of life once we develop the sense of embodiment. So for example, if I push you, Craig, you know, see if you can react to my push by tensing up more. It's really difficult to send if you are pushing back. And the more tense you become, the easier it is to push you over, yeah? <laughs> exactly. So now what we're going to do is the opposite of that. You inhale and immediately exhale. <sighs> Nice. And you don't have to bend over so much. You just maintain a nice alignment of your spine. Yes. Feel that? Yeah. So, would you push me? I'm not going anywhere. I'm actually comfortable here. I'm not tensing up. And as the push is coming, he's helping me breathe. I'm literally just exhaling the air out of the lungs because he is pressing in my stomach, helping me expel the air. Thank you, Craig. That was a really nice, relatively easy technique that I encourage you to play with. And you can actually do a little bit of coaching like we just did with Craig, pushing each other and developing the ability to recognize when it's not necessary to tense up and develop that sense of relaxation so that you don't have to push back or be reactive. Now, what's the alternative of reactivity? Being responsive. We'll continue digging deeper into this principle of being responsive rather than reactive in our classes as well. Until then, namaste.